So next question uh, we've got from uh, Iftikhar, which is also on uh, LinkedIn. And his question is, what are your predictions for local housing market in 2020? Great question. Right now, I think we're facing some interesting times. You know, Brexit has just happened. We're coming out of the uh, EU. We're now over the next 12 months, we're going through this phase where we've got to work out all these deals. I think there's confidence in the market. I think the general sentiment is there's growth happening. The Bank of England have decided last week not to change the interest rate, leave it where it is, which also just by doing that says quite a lot as well. Um, I think right now there's some very good opportunities to go out there. I think there's growth happening. So any of the flips and developments I'm doing, the agents are talking about much higher prices uh, to go in a seller than maybe we'd initially decided or we were thinking of doing. Um, but then at the same time, what that will mean is there's going to be more people in the market chasing the same deals. But the thing is, you want to be able to remain agile in this market in six months time as we start panning out these deals with the rest of the world in terms of trade deals, how we're going to work. We'll start seeing the impact of that, what that's going to mean to us as businesses, uh, costs uh, in terms of just simply, for example, building material. Uh, that's going to have a direct impact to us in terms of our businesses. How is that going to affect us? How will those price changes, depending on what arrangements they are with where these materials come from around the world, going to impact in terms of our development, refurbishment costs on projects as well? So there's, there's still a lot of unknown. I mean, six, eight months time, we'll probably start getting a bit more of a clearer picture of where we'll be. But I think right now, you know, the sentiment is the market's, uh, market's healthy, it's growing, it's continuing to, to grow. In Birmingham, for example, you asked about the local market. It's just been rampant for, for a few years now. I'd say probably coming on five years, the market is continuously strong growth year on year. Whether it will continue, it's really difficult to say because I think there's so many factors in the market right now uh, and so many variables that if even one of them change could have an impact of what's going to happen in the market. So uh, based on the factors, we can see the opportunities that exist, utilize those and make the most of the market. And I think if I remember correctly, yes, if you are a mortgage advisor, so you'll also have a great sense of what's going on in the market right now because you'll be doing mortgages for people. You'll see how comfortable the lenders are. Are they lending very easily or they've been quite difficult and tight uh, in terms of their appetite for, for lending as well? So thanks for that question, Iftikhar. Uh, next one is from uh, Rob, uh, which was also on LinkedIn. Uh, Rob's question is, uh, hi, what's a reasonable return on investment on a £200,000 investment which requires a first charge for the investor? That's a great question. So what's a good return on investment if you had £200,000 and you were going to lend it to somebody for a project and your security was going to be first charge on the property, which is very similar to what a bank uh, would take, say, for example, on a mortgage, what would you be comfortable with in terms of your return? Well, the reality is there actually isn't enough information there for us to be able to come up with that answer, first of all, in terms of uh, overall project, the risk factors, where it is, the certainty of exit, uh, how long is the money tied up for? All these factors will have an uh, impact in terms of what is a, a rate that we as an individual would be happy with. More importantly, the thing to remember is that if I was to ask that question right now for the people that are watching this video, and I say, what would be a good return on investment for you? I suspect that the figures will be wildly different in terms of what people are happy with. So when we talk about uh, raising money uh, or lending money, it's really about our own comfort levels and understanding people and what they want rather than dictating rates. So earlier we were talking about bridging. Often bridging tends to be around 1% a month, typically maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, but they tend to be typical rates. So if you're going to use that as a gauge, that would be, say, 12% per annum. But actually, if you had a first charge on a mortgage, you could probably get some mortgages around 2%, 2 2% uh, per annum. Now, the much longer periods of lending, but do you see what I mean in terms of comparison? So you've got to look at what else could somebody do? What's the alternative, particularly around property in terms of access to funds uh, and the basis of the risk with that as well? So um, if you're the lender, if you're putting money in um, versus that individual that's borrowing the money from you, where else could they raise that money from or what rate would that be available to them? So these are the things that take into consideration when we're talking about uh, rates the most important thing i think is to understand the person who's lending the money and what it is that they're ultimately looking for what's important for them in making a decision of who to lend that money for and the outcome that they're looking for because often it's not just about a question of what return someone's going to make it's about capital preservation being able to get their initial capital back as well 